founder of Brickwork and Truth Path Lending. John will educate us on the basics of LA City Zoning, including how to read LA City Zoning Code, an overview of what the different overlays are, specific plans, queue conditions, ordinances, et cetera, and why brick work reports provide value in terms of screening through all of this. John started his loan brokerage back in 2009 after the real estate crisis to leverage technology to provide a more efficient experience for his clients. The next challenge was to find solutions for the growing housing crisis in Los Angeles and identifying how challenging it is to navigate through the complex city zoning code to help in the initial identification and due diligence process for multifamily developers. This led him to team up with Alex Irvine to start Brick Plus Work, a platform providing this information at lower cost points and working to build more tools and provide relevant data that can help stakeholders innovate to develop a smarter city. And with that, I hand it over to John. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Anthony. Um, really appreciate uh, being on here. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is John, co-founder of Brickwork. I'm going to get right into this slide. So just to preface, our um, uh, uh, analyst created this. Uh, my partner, Alex Irvine, runs his own land use consulting firm, Irvine & Associates. That's where a lot of this information comes from. We've been around three plus years now, my goodness. And a lot of our users are uh, a lot of the top commercial brokers and broker teams out there. I always just name drop a few of them and kind of everyone in the industry knows who they are. Lori Lustig Bauer at CBRE, Philip Nicolette and Marcus Millichap. We have Newmark agents, Cushman agents, Jones, everyone in between. So they've been using our reports and relying on our reports to help them essentially provide insight on their listings to market them to developers. So I want to preface that, that we've been around for a while and uh, the information comes from uh, my partner's firm, who are a lot of them are ex city planners. So there's a revolving door in planning departments at cities and uh, private consultants. Okay, so that's kind of the baseline of what we do. So wanted to get right into it. So remember, um, it's important to remember zoning stems from and will continue to evolve in the city of Los Angeles through real estate speculation. Understanding where zoning changes are considered within the city will help you understand the potential value in emerging real estate corridors in Los Angeles. Real estate investors are obliged to know and understand the zoning laws and to apply any property they're considering before closing a deal. Why? Because zoning can have a direct impact on your bottom line. So um, uh, let's get right into it. So uh, zoning is unique to every parcel. Um, uh, City of Los Angeles zoning was established in October of 1921. The Los Angeles City Council, following the recommendation of the one-year-old City Planning Commission, created five zones designated by letters A through E. A for single-family homes, B for non-residential uses, C for commercial industrial uses, D prescribing only the heavy or toxic industrial uses, and E for uh, unlimited. Uh, Today, that has evolved into many layers and types of uses. We still use the letter system in Los Angeles. So similar land use uh, are grouped in general categories um, uh, and referenced according to the land use category, followed by a number to signify the allowable density, height, setbacks, required parking. All of this can be referenced in and codified in that's part of the Los Angeles uh, Municipal Code here. Uh, and of course, um, in Los Angeles, zoning has its um, uh, own chapter. So now the city of Los Angeles is unique also in that it has several overlays, all of which can be found on the city planning website. And obviously city of LA does uh, have uh, Zemus, um, but uh, that's it. Zemus for City of LA. Once you get into the, you know, 88 other municipalities within uh, LA County, they don't. So it's really difficult to start to navigate this. But um, so what we have in front of us are specific plans, uh, HPLZ, local historic districts, and community design overlays. Specific plans is a district where special zoning stipulates the type of development permitted within a zoning district. Uh, example, of course, is the Westwood Village. Local historic districts, there's 35 historic districts to protect 
neighborhoods with distinct architectural and cultural resources. Example, Angelino Heights. Community design overlays contain design guidelines that enhance the visual identity and character of a neighborhood. They can apply for new development projects and to improvements to existing properties. Example, Little Tokyo. So this is the Department of City Planning's kind of generalized summary of zoning regulations. So they're uh, categorized by zone, use, height, setbacks, minimum uh, area per lot and per dwelling unit, the lot width and parking requirement. Now, I want to show this only because I want to kind of go through um, the, it's a quick reference guide, right? It's not everything. It's just to kind of point you in a direction that you have to kind of start to dig further, right? And this is just a reference guide interested in the very basic requirements for a parcel without digging through the municipal code. Um, and so uh, you can use the municipal code and the code summary in tandem to essentially uh, go through and figure out what you're dealing with. The more practice you get with, with this, the better uh, uh, understanding you can have uh, with all of this. So here's the point. Really, uh, LA City is really complicated compared to other cities. Now, you know, obviously, you know, San Francisco, San Diego, New York City, Miami, a lot of the major big cities will have designations, overlays, ordinances, two conditions, all of this stuff, and, and they will continue to have it. Um, it's really difficult to go through each of these uh, zoning districts because this is just a baseline to point you in the right direction of what they are. Now, the problem is that once you get into beyond this, there's going to be those overlays that I mentioned, the historic, the specific plan, the queue condition, the ordinance, and all of these things will then uh, 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 essentially pull you away from what this zoning uh, general development standards say. So if there's, let's just say, for example, an overlay in an R4 zone, right, and it was a queue condition, well, what does the queue condition have an effect on the developability for that parcel? It will say, oh, sorry, even though you're R4 zone and you're supposed to take advantage of R4 density, um, because of this two condition that was passed, this block, this neighborhood, sometimes it's just uh, parcels that are side by side and one side is a Q condition and the other side isn't. So unfortunately, if you're gonna combine the lots and try to build with, uh, you know, both parcels or three parcels, the queue condition will, will kind of have a uh, say over that uh, entire, uh, you know, um, those three lots. It will uh, uh, cut you down into a uh, R3 zone. So you don't get advantage of the R4 density. You're only going to be able to build to R3. So that's a lot of the pitfalls and things you have to navigate, unfortunately, in LA City, which makes zoning much more complicated. And even a lot of developers that, uh, kind of get burnt, right? They buy properties assuming that uh, they could build up to a certain density. I uh, uh, There's one example of one that bought something in Koreatown and I'm not gonna go into specifics, but um, yeah, they, they got burnt. They, they essentially had to change plans. They overpaid for that property and they had to renovate and, and look at it from a totally different perspective and then wait out their loss to hopefully that they could kind of recoup. And this was a developer out of state looking to build something in Koreatown. So this is not, not just for uh, agents and, and investors, developers kind of also get burned. So this is essentially how the zoning in LA city is classified. You have the prefix, the zone classification, the height, the limitations beyond the height district. So the D limitations here uh, in particular, and then you have overlays. No wonder it's complicated. And this is just existing. They have a proposed right now, the zoning code, which is like 3x this. So it's just, it looks like a computer software code. And I'm like, wow, that's a great decision for the planning department to overcomplicate the, uh, the planning and the zoning, and which will make brickwork uh, even more uh, valuable is that we'll, we'll be able to navigate even more complication than here. But essentially, as I discussed, the prefix is a Q. So a Q condition is when in that parcel, that neighborhood, that pocket, 
they've decided, oh, let's just put Miracle Mile uh, as an example, because Miracle Mile is very notorious for having a lot of cute conditions and a lot of historic overlays, right? And in that neighborhood, particular neighborhood, the reason why it's difficult to build there is because there will be a cute condition. Okay, fine. You would think there's one cute condition to kind of describe what you can and can't do. In one particular report that was requested, there was 22 different unique cube conditions on one parcel. And so uh, we were like, oh, what's this? So we called, uh, contacted the planning department, ultimately got someone higher up that said, yeah, it's this one that's uh, relevant to that site. We're like, why don't you delete the 21 other cube conditions that are on this parcel? And they're like, well, uh, yeah, uh, we, we'd like to. And uh, we've, we've uh, asked uh, you know, the city to do so, but for some reason we can't get to that point. And of course, this is the nature of government, right? Inefficiencies. I was been surprised to see that. So um, just beware, even if you have a cube condition, you could have 21 other ones and you just don't know how to navigate which one's relevant. You have the zone classification that I had mentioned and showed you the chart earlier for C2. Uh, this is a one height district. Now there's a delimitation. So in this one, a delimitation also is similar to a Q condition where all of these overlays is meant to limit density. That's what really the relevance is. Even though historic will have a design overlay and you have to follow the characteristic of that neighborhood, yeah, that's understood. But a lot of the other overlays say, yeah, you, you, there are those overlays uh, that, that uh, are more design related, but most of them have to do with density. And there's multiple factors how they could limit density, but you know, it, it, it always uh, comes back to residential density. It's always coming back to limiting how many units you can build for the site. And then the overlays here is the, the CDO. So there's ordinances in play as well uh, uh, in all of this. So um, this is Zemes. I just wanted to kind of um, point this out. It's a great tool. It, to me, it looks like it was built in the 1990s, right? Uh, it's got a map. It does, uh, you know, you could put any address in here and it will get you to uh, their system where they have the jurisdictional assessor, planning zone, all of that here. But the problem with Zemes is that they hyperlink you to the queue condition, to the specific plan, to the ordinance. You have to read through those pages and you have to interpret and, and understand what they mean to your parcel and site. So Brickwork saw this and saw that even LA City has EMIS, most municipalities don't. We want to take it a step further and be able to um, kind of explain what these overlays uh, mean, but ultimately get you to calculating how many units you could build on a particular site. We go through all the calculations, uh, look at the parcel, the dimensions, envelope, setbacks, all of that stuff gets netted and calculated. And then we search through all the, uh, the overlays that I mentioned to come up with a, a net number. And that's really what, what our value add is at Brickwork. So, okay, so Will, this is one of the scenarios and the pocket uh, listings that you have. And so, yeah, yeah, through. yeah. So, um, so a client came to me, uh, said, "Hey, I mentioned earlier that there was a client looking for property, multifamily property that has ADU potential. So, I found this property. It's in Lincoln Heights. Currently, six units, uh, two buildings, um, on a eight thousand fourteen square foot lot. There are three one bedrooms, two, two bedrooms and one, three bedrooms. Um, so he want, my client wanted to know like what, you know, he's looking for value add um, and potentially to have some units already there that get him some income while he's building. So uh, what's, uh, how many potential units can he build on this, on this parcel? Great. So this is an example of why the zoning is so important to also realize what uh, ADU, because ADU law, state, adopted, love it. It's, it's strong. It, it, it uh, somewhat disallows a lot of the uh, cities to limit the potential of the ADU, but it, it still is, um, you still have to look at inherent zoning. So this property is zone RD3-1 HPOZ. These are important. The RD is not R3. HPOZ means it's historic. So both of those 
um, factors, uh, we came up with and said, well, right now, given the information available to us, we, um, you can uh, build one additional dwelling unit, but it's got to be converted from non-habitable space, like a garage, boiler room, storage room, rec room, you name it, like something in that category can be converted. Now, we also put other factors. And so the um, this has to be in conjunction with uh, someone that could walk that property, uh, because obviously we can't just have floor plans available for every property. So we've noticed a few people that are, um, you know, Obviously, if you call an architect to walk a property, that's a cost uh, there. So uh, there's apps, AR apps that I've heard agents are using that just you could walk the property, you can shoot that laser out, and it'll just give you uh, a, a rough uh, dimensions of each room, right? So you can calculate that, put that in the app, and then you have to walk it yourself to see what is non-habitable uh, space, non-living space. So obviously, you have to go see the site. Uh, need floor plans to determine size. The conversion would not require any parking, which is uh, a plus here. But the historic preservation overlay zone would make it subject to additional design review. That you just, there are historic consultants. We have a few in our Rolodex that we always recommend. And you just have to work with the historic board to unfortunately figure out what they're willing to uh, allow or not. Allow. So let me explain why this information that John just gave me is so valuable, okay? So my client, right, looks at this property. He sees six units. He sees, oh, it's a big lot. Maybe I can just drop in a couple of like prefab ADUs on here, you know, and then I can get up to eight units, blah, 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 blah. But based on what John just told me, right, he can't do that. There's no current garage space. There's no rec room. There's nothing that he can convert. So he can't convert anything that's already there. It doesn't sound like he can do prefab either because that wouldn't fit into the historic preservation overlay zone. So the information that John just gave us, well, gave my client potentially, just saved him a, a lot of pain and headache, right? Because then you can say, okay, this is not what I'm looking for it might be what someone else is looking for, but it's not quite what he's looking for. So I think that this is a great example of, you know, the type of information that Brickwork can can provide. Um, Absolutely. So um, let's go to the second scenario if you want. Yeah. To so this is this is even more interesting because this is a property I have coming up. Okay. So. Um, uh, I have a, a, a coming soon. It's two uh, side by side uh, mixed use properties. So one uh, is two commercial units and one residential unit. It's on a 4,811 square foot lot. Next door is another mixed use, two commercial, two residential units, total of 6,715 square foot lots. So the question is, if you're able to buy both lots, you know, the side-by-side -side lots, which I believe are commercially zoned because it's already mixed use, mm -hmm. how many units do you think you could get out of those, out, out of those two, two, two parcels? Yeah, so um, our team looked at this and it says here in red, if commercially zoned, you'd have to apply for a conditional use permit and provide commercial ground floor in, uh, but in neither uh, zone is 100% residential allowed. So you can't go just 100% resi on either, but obviously mixed use. That was the, um, you know, this is the, the, the South Gates. And again, South Gate is uh, not LA city, it's its own municipality. And again, I got to point out, there's 80 something uh, in LA County alone, let alone Riverside, Ventura, Orange, and everyone, everybody has their own unique uh, zoning code, <laughs> own unique overlay. So everything I had gone through obviously was LA City because you know we we're part of LA uh, uh, City, but as you can see, 
Um, you have to navigate each individual code, overlays, know what they mean, interpret it to bring that down. So that answers that one. Um, I know you had also asked, what if you bought 9610 Long Beach Boulevard? So three contiguous lots, how many units could you have then? So for us, we calculated that by right, you can do 11 units. This city allows you to round up um, uh, on the calculation. And then while the density bonus, you can do 17 units. But if you combine, sorry, that was for the two. If you combine the third parcel, then you could get 15 units by right and 23 units with density bonus. Let me just quickly um, uh, go over what density bonus is. So um, in all parcels in California, you have two options. Uh, one is in LA City, they pass TOC, Transit Oriented Communities, which basically um, incentivizes development that are uh, uh, in close proximity to public transportation. It could be rail, it could be bus, it could be subway. Any of these type of, uh, you know, uh, transit corridors, they call them, if you're within half mile or, or however far you are, you get that in units, but you have to give up affordable. So it's give and take, right? So they basically said, we'll give you this much X more. And TOC is great because they're really like 60, 70, 80% more, but you need to also come up with some affordable, but the math works. There's a lot of TOC development that's being utilized because basically they said, oh, they got the numbers right. In order to give up this many affordable units, we need this much more in market rate units. So that works. What is density bonus? Well, that's only in TOC, you know, buffer zones or uh, where you're approved. If you're not there, or if you're not even part of LA City, like here in Southgate, you have the state density bonus program. The cool part is the state increased that. It used to be 35% for the longest time. They increased it to 50. That's huge, I think, right? Because it really, it, uh, uh, you're able to qualify for that. If you're in the state of California, there's some other um, stuff I'm, I'm, I'm uh, glossing over, but essentially that's uh, uh, afforded to you. So as you can see, 50% bonus, but then there's calculations here. It's not just an even number. We have to look at is uh, they look at floor area ratio. They look at underlying zoning and a lot of this stuff. So we're just providing you the net numbers right now. There's more calculation there in the back that we did to come up with this uh, as well. So this is scenario number two uh, in how many units you can build. Now, once again, uh, let me just explain why this is so valuable, right? I mean, the fact that he John can cut brickwork can kind of come up with this information. Now, me as the listing agent can be like, okay, I can approach developers and be like, listen, we've got these side by side lots. Hey, any developers in this room, you know, look at this. You can build up to 17 units. They're currently only three, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Three, three residential units. You know, that's massive. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's these are. These are huge opportunities, you know, for folks if they're looking to, and 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 you know, I'm working on a couple of TOC density bonus deals right now. You know, one where um, by right we could build up to I think it was 37, 38 units, but with density bonus we could build up to 67 units. You know, wow. it's a lot. Yeah. A lot, you Absolutely. know, so th these these density bonuses are huge. You know, in terms of if you're a developer looking at potentially, you know, increasing your your unit count, and obviously that changes your numbers tremendously when you're trying to pencil this out. Absolutely, absolutely. So that was scenario two, and obviously, just we just wanted to link the resources here, and uh, you know, this is uh, brickwork. Us, um, I, I want to pull up quickly uh, just a sample report. Now we have a couple different ones. Um, the ADU one we have is the um, the latest iteration is this one. So what we do right now is if you wanted an ADU report, you request it on our website, just like our other reports. But we have in-house uh, architects that work part-time, really. Um, and a lot of them, uh, I can't name names right now, but uh, one uh, uh, placed on the low-rise competition. So they're, they're very talented, right? But then they also have a passion and we have a shared vision, which is, we think the most 
uh, impactful kind of uh, uh, you know housing solution right now in LA or California is low rise. So it's the single families getting converted to four units with Senate Bill 9, or it's adding ADUs, or you're looking at four plexes to combine to build into that 17 unit, but then it could be, you know, depending on on uh, uh, on on the zoning, right? Like what you're trying to do, but there's more of those zonings and there's more of those properties that are out there. So we align in that, and that's what we want to do. So this is something that you can order. We'll give you look. We'll, we're looking at this, this as a sample property, and we're going, hey, there's two quick scenarios. You could convert the garage, and then you could add a JADU, or you could do a detached ADU and a JADU. Now the caveat being that JADUs require floor plans. So we obviously uh, provide that. And say, you want to explain what, the, what a JADU is? Oh, sorry. It's a junior ADU. And so the new ADU laws in 2020 that passed were awesome. We're amazing. They allow even a single family R1 zone property and lot to build an external ADU. So that could be, uh, you know, it could be a conversion too, but then you can demo that uh, garage in the back and you could build uh, an ADU uh, new up to 1200 square feet uh external if the uh, lot is big enough right and then a junior adu is anything in your home in your current existing dwelling that is non-living space that you could convert and uh into uh, a junior adu it is it's in itself um can be rented out so you can have a tenant the only thing is it's shared wall tenant right and so there are architects out there for now, and there's probably, um, I would say, projects out there that's already built. Have some really creative ways that uh, that you can add the junior ADU, and I would point to them to figure out uh, if, if it's possible. So for us, our intention again as land use consultants, uh, really uh, is what Brickwork is, is really to uh, give you what's allowed by interpreting all those specific plans and codes and then telling you what's possible in the max square footage. This is by no way or means telling you that this is you should build it to this. The next uh, uh, step is to contact an architect. Now the architect will go into here and actually go, okay, well, look, this detached ADU at 800 square feet sounds like a much better deal than the smaller conversion, right? I would do that, right? And so uh, uh, that's something that you should look at. Oh, 800 square feet, how much is it to build? Can you architect design uh, how it would look like on a stick build versus modular? Um, uh, you know, can I get a loan for this? Um, what are the comps? W what can I rent this for? P price per square foot? What is the valuation on ADUs uh, post build? Like all of this stuff will come into play naturally. But again, that's for you as the person doing it. You're you're the agent. You got to start the conversation somewhere. So that's uh, our ADU report. What I covered earlier was our brickwork kind of reports. So I want to quickly go through here. So. Uh, you know, we're working on the design. We want to make this better, but really, a lot of our users have stuck with us because the the information was valuable, and it's at price points where one lot like this we charge a hundred dollars for this report. And so, just to give you context, we're meeting with developers, and they're going, "Wow, our land use consultants are charging us five thousand per report." Granted, their reports go much deeper. They're looking at comp developments, what occurred when they try to get that entitlement done. I mean, they'll dig really deep, right? But do you really need that in your where you're at? No, right? You just need to know, hey, I have properties. What can I build? And what can I recommend to my clients as buyers or listing agents or, or sellers, right? And so that's really, I think, really uh, a good value at $100 per lot of parcel. We go through all of this, the buy right, the development potential, TLC, uh, density bonus, floor area ratio, height, your setbacks, your uh, max buildable area, footprint, envelope, all of this stuff um, we navigate. And then we go, hey, um, is this rent stabilization ordinance? Yes. Is there a specific plan? Q I know this is cut off, sorry about that, but QRT conditions, D limitations, like all of this stuff we not only identify, but then we've already calculated it into our net number. And even beyond that, if you want us to help you explain that more, we're not available on the phone, not yet. Once we grow, we will have customer service agents and more people, but via email, we will answer all these questions. We will even break out the calculations for you. This is super valuable for agents because uh, like I said, to your clients or to developers that you're talking to, it's huge to have all this information readily available, third party. Okay. So that's it for me. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, 
I, I know that there are some questions here in the chat and, um, uh, but we wanna open up to the floor if there are any questions, um, if anybody would like to, to ask John any questions. I, okay, so I'll just start reading for the chat. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom. Gerald says, can you also recommend an architect after receiving the land use report or can one of your staff architects draw plans? And did you say the report is $100? Yeah, we have preferred uh, architects, uh, a few of them. I, I'll say one, Daniel Gaiman. I've been on his webinars. There's one coming up. He's pretty well known locally here, adjunct professor over at USC uh, School of Architecture. He's one of our partners, but we have uh, countless others. We don't have an interest in doing architecture, going into GC and studying all of that stuff. We're really here to provide as much value as uh, consultants if possible. And yes, it is $100 per lot or parcel. So if in uh, the example earlier, it was two lots or three lots, it would be two or 300. Now, you know, there's ways to get around that. I'll tell you now, you sign up as a specialist, it's month to month, $100, you'll get four lots per month at 100. So that's a much better deal. Month to month meaning, uh, you know, if you want to cancel, you could cancel any time, but you know, it will roll over uh, month to month. Um, Trish is talking about ADU, like one of the key points is parking. You're allowed to convert a garage or even a carport to an ADU without providing for parking, for either new parking or for a new unit or replacing on-site parking, you are converting. That is correct. Yes. Can you discuss in general how, how to know how much square footage is allowed on a lot, single family and multifamily? Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, that's the issue. It's not a generic answer. It's really site specific, depends on zoning. Uh, LA City has something uh, RFA, the residential floor area. You generally speaking, multiply the lot by 0.45 and then you minus setbacks and the existing dwelling. And that's how you come up with the rough number on say Senate Bill 9 and what you can build. But there's more to that, two story, three story, uh, the zoning, and there could be some overlays on that as well. And that's only for Senate Bill 9, which is different than a, a regular build if you want to build something by right. And then that's different than ADU. So all three, depending on parcel and zoning, that's why we're here. You, it's best just to uh, request the report from us and we'll we'll provide that analysis. And let's not forget about SB8, which is hurting, well, which is complicating for, for a lot of developers because with SB8, the state is requiring that if you take, if you take out any units, you mm -hmm. have to replace those units. Yeah. And sometimes by replacing them, you're not penciling out as a developer. So that's something that, you know, we all suggest everybody keep in mind. And SB 10, uh, that'll be a conversation later. The only problem with SB 10 is it gives the onus to the city to approve it. And, you know, not a lot of them have indicated they will, but if they do, and we're pushing for LACD to be the first, and it looks like they're half and half, halfway there to, to make that, that'll be huge. Because in those areas, by right is 10 units. Uh, so, and then you could add ADUs on that, and there's multiple ways to hack that to make 10 units, 12 units, maybe 14 units with junior ADUs, maybe conversions from that. I mean, there's ways to actually get that number up. But again, uh, none of the cities has um, okay SB10. As of yet, I think uh, it's coming. Bill Flanagan, I see your hand up. Hey, thank you, Will. Um, Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Sorry, my video is not working. I'm on my phone. Um, does this, do you guys also cover other parts of LA County like Pasadena, you know, Burbank, Glendale, these other cities? So the kind of analysis you're talking about for the city of LA, you also do there? Yes, um, but we have a map uh, of our coverage area and we have, we got to go back and update it because what happened was, um, we actually expanded beyond that. And that's all based on requests. We uh, look at kind of all the municipalities and we're not going in there and uh, 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 providing coverage. We do that more based on demand. So like when, like recently, Costa Mesa, there's a lot of uh, demand on all fronts, SB9, ADU, just development. And so Costa Mesa has a unique uh, zoning code that we've uh, found a little bit challenging and the planning departments aren't necessarily fully accessible like we'd like. But once we got 
understanding and we ran some test cases, now we have Costa Mesa covered. So yeah, um, what I would do is just request it. And if it's not within coverage, since we're getting demand, we'll just go and get that uh, municipality covered. Yeah, David is asking, do you plan to expand the service beyond LA County, beyond California? Uh, yeah, so we are a startup company. So uh, unfortunately, our crowdfunding ended uh, a month ago. So we were open, anybody could have invested, but we're not going to open that again. Um, we are taking private investments. So uh, obviously, you know, minimum 25,000. But again, the whole goal here is once we have enough capital and we, uh, we're already building the map currently right now, we built it for West Hollywood. So for you, I know you guys are based out of West Hollywood. So any West Hollywood property, if you request it in the map, we could instantly know what it is. Now, the next goal and what we're internally working on is LA City. LA City, much more complicated. West Hollywood, the only overlay that had anything to do with density is the SSP, the specific plan. And so everything else is all based on uh, hospitality, hotels, like all that stuff. So West Hollywood was easy. LA City, as you can see, is its own animal. There's just so many overlays and we're working through that internally. So we will get that released. But as far as you're saying beyond, yeah, as soon as we can get more venture capital funds in, we'll be in San Diego. A lot of agents, a lot of homeowners are already reaching out to us uh, from San Diego. So that's the natural progression. And then we'll go up north. And then uh, Eduardo is asking, can you build a second floor on an ADU? I think you can. Um, uh, depends, right? Yeah, it depends. So the height limit is uh, 16 feet. It depends what your one story is, uh, your first, the height of your one story is. And so, uh, and then it's different technically from LA City and others. Um, Depends. Yeah. And so again, uh, the generic answer is depends. The better answer is if you have a particular property in mind, request it, we'll take a look. We'll let you yeah. I, I just know that the property that I showed at the beginning, the yeah. fourplex with two ADUs, yeah. um, that um, they have a second floor. So yeah. that's, how, that's how I know that you can yeah. be done. Yeah. You know? Oh, no, it can. I, I, the yeah. only reason I said I hesitated is because uh, it's 16 feet. So it's like, you know, what you could fit in there. And then uh, some areas aren't. Uh, so that's how I answer it. Just, it's really site specific, so. Um, well, I think we need to wrap up here. Trish okay. says, just sent me a direct message and it was, it's very fruitful. It says, thank you. This has been helpful in re reiterating that the LA zoning code needs professionals to interpret them. And that's true. And we want to thank John very much. John Jung from Brickwork. Um, you want to tell everybody the website again? Yeah, it's uh, uh, brickwork.la. Uh, and uh, I'll put my email on there, John at Brickwork LA. But yeah, we're, our tool was built for brokers. So that's our kind of core DNA. It's really for agents, really. And so that, and then obviously the spillover has been developers who's validated us. So that should incentivize brokers more because developers are using us as well. So this is really accurate information. And then now with ADU and Senate Bill 9 and all that good stuff, homeowners, home investors, multifamily investors, buyers. So it's really anyone that's wanting to do with anything property related that touches zoning, unfortunately. So yeah. Well, thank you, John, so much. Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, I always learn whenever, um, whenever you present, it's always, you know, yeah, for those of us who are in it, this thing is constantly changing. <laughs> so, and there's so many levels to it. It's like physics. So, <laughs> so thank you, John. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you, Will. Thank you. Um, Anthony, any last words? Um, no, thank you guys for coming. Stay tuned for our next session on July 13th. We'll let you know what time and we're hoping to be uh, hybrid in person and on Zoom. Um, so stay tuned for that and to see any of our past sessions as always, they're on our YouTube page. So you can search the Collective Realty on YouTube or the link is posted in the chat um, to follow up on all the other past great, great, great education that uh, we've put together. So that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you next time. <laughs>